Most specialty mushrooms are grown on sterilized substrates and once a contaminant gets a foothold it flourishes in the absence of competition from other contaminants. In nature complex interactions among hundreds of other fungi bacteria nematodes maintain an ecological equilibrium. In a sterilized medium the grower provides ideal conditions for the contaminant to prosper. The only competition for these contaminants is the cultivated fungus itself. Signs of contamination Odor Odor can be extremely helpful in detecting a contaminant when it's not visible. It can also be helpful in telling mushroom mycelium from molds that resemble mushroom mycelium. It is sometimes possible to catch a hidden mold in a spawn jar simply by smelling the spawn before spawning. Odors are easiest to detect immediately after shaking. Odor can also be helpful when it comes to agar work. While not all molds produce an odor I haven't found a P. cubensis culture that didn't smell like mushrooms. Slime A common sign of bacteria is a slimy appearance of mycelium or grains. In areas where substrate presses against glass and condensation as present brown-yellow slimy rings are often present around the grains on the other grains it may be noticed as a sort of gel or a crust on the grain surface. Oils and starches from burst grains may appear similar and but will already be present at the end of sterilization whereas bacteria will appear later. Dusty texture and Sporophores are usually too small to see individually, however they can often be seen collectively as a powdery layer covering the substrate or mycelium. Looking for this texture is very helpful in distinguishing them from bruising or other discolorations the mushroom mycelium may develop. 1. Wet spot sour rot, Bacillus sp. In grain spawn jars one commonly encounters Bacillus which sometimes survives the sterilization process as heat-resistant endospores, a dull gray to mucus-like brownish slime characterized by a strong but foul odor variously described as smelling like rotting apples, dirty socks or burnt bacon. Bacillus makes uncolonized grain appear excessively wet, hence the name, wet spot pallid to whitish ridges along the margins of individual grain kernels characterize this contaminant Bacillus primarily reproduces through simple cell division in times of adverse environmental conditions, especially heat a single hardened spore forms within each parent cell body, bacterial endospores which can survive high temperatures for prolonged time. The most practical method for eliminating bacterial endospores involves soaking the grain at room temperature 12 to 24 hours prior to sterilization. Endospores, if viable, will germinate within that time frame and then be susceptible to standard sterilization procedures and new endospores won't form in the moist environment of the resting jar of grain. 2. Bacterial blotch, Pseudomonas tolacei, p. fluorescence. Yellow to brown lesions form on mushrooms typically spotting occurs at or near the edge of mushroom caps blotch occurs when mushrooms remain wet for a period of four to six hours or longer after water has been applied. The bacterium is spread in airborne soil particles controls include lowering humidity and watering with a 150 ppm chlorine solution. Calcium hypochlorite products are used since sodium hypochlorite products may burn caps. If the mushroom stays wet, however chlorine has little effect since the bacterial population reproduces at a rate that neutralizes the effect of the oxidizing agent. Shiitake caps are affected by a bacterial disease caused by Pseudomonas gladioli, Burkholderia gladioli. Sanitation is a critical component of control measures. 3. Cobweb mold or Dactylium mildew, Hypomyces sp. A cottony mycelium grows over casing. When it contacts a mushroom the mycelium soon envelopes the mushroom with a soft mildewy mycelium and causes a soft rot it is also a parasite of wild mushrooms. Cobweb mold is darker than mycelium almost gray as compared to white the difference in color is sometimes hard to tell for somebody that hasn't seen them side by side before cobweb has several other indicators the one that sticks out is the speed of growth a small patch the size of a dime will spread to cover an entire jar casing in just a day or two cobweb is also very very fine strands while mycelium tends to be thicker ropes cobweb mold is favored by high humidity control strategies include lowering humidity and or increasing air circulation.
4. Green mold, Trichoderma harzianum. Green mold caused by Trichoderma harzianum is characterized by an aggressive white mycelium that grows over the casing and onto mushrooms, causing a soft decay masses of spores that eventually form are emerald green, heavily infested patches of compost or barren. Many commercial products are available for cleaning surfaces. The base ingredients in these materials include chlorine iodine phenol or quaternary ammonium among others. Other green molds may be better defined as indicators since they don't seem to be as aggressive as Trichoderma harzianum. These species of Trichoderma also sporulate on the casing surface and may sporulate on infected mushrooms. These fungi indicate that carbohydrates are available possibly due to inadequate nitrogen supplementation during phase 1 or under composting. Trichoderma reportedly produce toxins that dissolve mushroom cells walls, a wet compost low in ammonia prior to pasteurization flies poor sanitation anaerobiosis and other factors influence green mold. These fungi are common in sawdust and commonly occur in the production of specialty mushrooms. Trichoderma is often mistaken for penicillium or aspergillus molds, and vice versa, being that all three look very similar and are not easy to tell apart without the use of a microscope. 5. Lipstick mold, sporendonema purpurescens. This fungus colonizes compost or casing as spores mature the color of the mold changes from white to pink to cherry red and finally to dull orange it is slow growing. Spores spread in air during watering and on pickers. The lipstick mold utilizes certain fats in the compost it is an uncommon problem. Control is centered around sanitation. 6. Pink mold, red bread mold, Neurospora. Commonly to occasionally seen on agar and grain, Neurospora is fast growing, sometimes taking only 24 4 hours to totally colonize a media filled petri dish. It is ubiquitous in nature, occurring on dung in soils and on decaying plant matter. Since this fungus grows through cotton stoppers or filter discs, a single contaminated jar, though sealed, can spread spores to adjacent spawn jars within the laboratory. This condition is more likely if the filter discs or cotton plugs are the least bit damp, or if the external humidity is high. 7. Blue-green molds, Penicillium SPP. Abundant blue-green spores are produced on the surface of the substrate, similar to Aspergillus favorable conditions parallel those for the black whisker mold Penicillium SPP utilize simple carbohydrates as well as cellulose starch fat and lignin. These fungi are very common on specialty mushrooms and are one of the chief concerns in agar and grain culture. Spores are airborne and ubiquitous. 8. Black mold, also yellow mold and others, Aspergillus sp. Very common in agar and grain culture and in compost making found on most any organic substrate Aspergillus prefers a near neutral to slightly basic pH well used wooden trays and shelves for holding compost are frequent habitats for this contaminant in the growing house. Species range in color from yellow to green to black most frequently Aspergillus species are greenish and similar to penicillium. Aspergillus niger, as its name implies, is black Aspergillus flavus as yellow Aspergillus clavatus as blue-green Aspergillus fumigatus as grayish-green and Aspergillus variscolor exhibits a variety of colors, greenish to pinkish to yellowish. These molds like many others change in color and appearance according to the medium on which they occur. Several dry bubble verticillium this is caused by verticillium a species which produces sticky spores. This is the most common and serious fungal disease of mushroom crop. If it is left uncontrolled disease can totally destroy a crop in two to three weeks. Whitish mycelial growth is initially noticed on the casing soil, which has a tendency to turn grayish yellow. The symptoms produced vary with the developmental stage of the mushroom at the time of infection at pinhead formation results in the production of malformed pinheads, which turn a gray brown color and remain leathery infection at a later stage causes a thickening of the stipe, especially at the base. Abnormalities 1. Rose comb Condition where pink gill tissue often with a porous appearance develops on the surface of a mushroom cap the cause has been attributed to contamination by petroleum-based materials. 2. Scaling The natural reaction of the mushroom cap to dry air. 3. Stroma 
Dense mycelial growth without fruiting stroma occurs if spawn is mishandled or exposed to harmful petroleum-based fumes or chemicals. It also occurs in dry environments.